Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. Nomads of Home, Nomads of Soul. Written by DM of the Tomb. We are the Nomads of Home. Such a strange line. One in which we never understood until the answer was right there in front of us. Even then, it was hard to believe. Our home, that is to say our home world, had for thousands of years been completely explored and long since been all but abandoned in favor of a nomadic lifestyle amongst the stars. Our ancestors, who were herbivore crazes, had always had a deep instinct to keep moving and traveling, yet at the same time wanted the safety and security from predators which a stationary shelter provided. Quite contradictory, we know. So it seemed that when we started leaving the safety of our home world to spread out across our galaxy, we had finally made the decision to be nomads over the safety of staying stationary. We would only come to regret this decision generations later, when it was far too late to go back and change our minds. Even though we had spread out without any major outposts on the planet, our people still somehow managed a single species-wide feudal-like government. Instead of a sex of territory governed by nobles who answered to a central ruler, fleet commanders resided in massive space stations, often many miles in diameter. These stations' main purpose was to act as a greenhouse for growing food for the array of personal ships that would follow and contribute to towing the station along with the fleet, even in FDL. Every station noble would keep in contact with the other fleets and coordinate travel plans, emergency meetings, and adding to each other's star maps. It wasn't a perfect system, but it worked for us for generations. And soon, nearly an entire quadrant of our galaxy was populated with our nomadic people. All the while, we had been surprised by the significant lack of other life. Sure, there had been other worlds with bacteria, or even sometimes some primitive algae, that was about it. That was until some poor, small, unnamed fleet of family ships came across who would become to known as the Still, since their true name remains untranslatable to us even now. The Still were a race much older than our own, and it seemed only fitting that they had originated from a near opposite side of the galaxy as us, for they were in almost every way our exact opposite. Where we were small nomadic herbivores, they were hawking ambush predators. Where we had quickly spread ourselves then across our quadrant of space as nomads, they had only slowly spread across space in mostly internal military conflicts. Despite their slow progression, they had been here much longer than us, and had thus populated nearly every habitable world the other three quarters of our home galaxy had to offer. We don't know for sure why they started the war, was it because they saw us as an unwanted intruders? Were we simply a prey species that they had eagerly waited for? Or had we offended them in some way? We don't know. But it took us by surprise, and it hit us hard. Our feudal-style government was slow to organize itself in any meaningful way. And even once it had, we were still stretched too thin and were far too unorganized and unarmed to make a real difference. Radio channels, FTL transmitters, solar wind vans, gravity springs, and so many other forms of communication were all cramped full of single messages from us all to the void. Help us! It was all we could do. Our fleets would only run so far, you see. Ships from the still were massive and bulky vessels meant for armored combat, but they were slow. So that organized effort of our government had been to just flee. We'd gotten cornered at the edge of the galaxy. We knew for a certain fact that it would take only a year for the still to catch up. We were gathered in a literal edge of our own galaxy. Beyond was nothing. No chance of survival. Nowhere to run. And so, when we called out to the void at our backs, with all we had, we didn't know if there was even anything, let alone anyone out there. There were so many warships of the still ahead of us. We were desperate and figured it was worth a try. But that desperation paid off. You can imagine our surprise when just a month before the still was scheduled to catch us and finish us off, a voice from the void had answered our call. It was faint, but it was there and it gave us hope. 
Perhaps we could tell these strangers of who we were, so that our people would not only be remembered as a meal, but the voice came from the void, transmitting an advanced blink channels which we had only just recently developed in these war times. Was not offering to be a witness to our end and remember our trials. Instead, they offered exactly what we had called out for, to help. We didn't get to talk long or even send them any information about us other than our coordinates. They simply said, We are nomads of home. We will come to you. And then we lost their signal. We had thought that they had decided to just ignore us. We were wrong. Soon the day came when the full force of the still fleets arrived. We could feel the subtle rumble in our ship's bulkheads from their large ships dropping out of FTL and could see the warm glow of their weapons charging to shred us to slag. But then, a new sensation flowed through us, the rumble of the bulkheads where subspace was distributed from FTL travel. But this was not a faint shaking. This was a roaring cry from the void behind us. All of a sudden, that warm, growing glow of still weapons in front of us became unnoticeable against the harsh and blinding beams of light coming from behind us. A crashing and booming voice forced through every speaker on our ships, and presumably the still ships too. It echoed with the confidence and authority which we'd only heard in legends. We are the nomads of home! We are the nomads of soul! Looking back at our distressed ship scans and visuals, we could see what their nomads were. An entire solar system. One star, nine planets, an asteroid belt, and billions of ships size varying from house to size of small planets. These humans, as we learned they called themselves, had brought their entire solar system, perhaps their entire species here, to us from across the void between galaxies. We would learn later that the humans had achieved what our ancestors desired, but never even conceived. Using something I once heard a human call a jacked-up Kaplan thruster, they turned their entire solar system into one massive ship. You see, humans are very stubborn creatures. When we had the choice to either stay on our home world or explore the stars, we chose to explore. The humans, on the other hand, decided not to choose either, and instead take birth. They stay in their home solar system, and they take it with them across the cosmos. They are the true nomads of their home, always safe and stationary, while still having the universe in their grasp. End of story. Story number two. Return, written by British Tea Company. Have you ever wondered what 20,000 warships clustered together in a single solar system, coming towards a single target and bearing down on it would look like? Can you imagine the countless munitions being fired all at once, the trails of ordnance as they flew across space, illuminating the darkness for just a brief moment as they splashed against their targets, tearing through shields and shattering hulls. Can you imagine the shock of seeing that many vessels randomly appear at the edge of a system? The sheer surprise of the sensor officer seeing that many blips appear right on his screen. Can you imagine the frantic comms officer as he does his best to hail the approaching bogies? Or the terror of the commanding officer as he sees hundreds of thousands of weapons warming up. Everything pointed straight at his station, and every vessel nested around it. Earth, the most vile world in the known galaxy, home to countless vicious creatures with an atmosphere and climate so volatile that even the hardest of races would dismiss it from its flora and fauna alone. The task force station and its orbit have been at odds since their assignment began, 300 years later. Not a single expedition had ever been mounted on the planet's surface for fear of its volatile climate and its vicious life forms. The main event, however, had returned. Fear was no longer regulated to the unholy presence of Sol system, but the entire Milky Way. On this day, the galaxy shuddered as news hit every major civilization. Many denied its plausibility. Some refused to believe it. After three centuries, Terra incarnate returned. From the depths of unknown space to where they were first exiled, the human empire had returned. My brethren, after three centuries of exile, after all the humiliation, defeat that we had endured, the galaxy 
has tasted our wrath once again. They have grown soft and lazy in the absence of their nightmares. Tomorrow, we remind them of the dread eternal which they will endure as we seize the reins of this galaxy once more. But for now, as we shatter their timid tower around their home worlds and brought back to the world they consider to be unholy, there is only one thing to say to our blessed race after we finish our first step. Welcome home. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's sister, Ambrose Cattell, and Quantum Wednesday. Thank you very much.